Hello. This week I'm going to be trying something that I've not actually done myself before. Um, so I thought I'd bring you along on the journey and you can see what kind of job I make of it. Fingers crossed it's not too bad. Um, I've made rivers and I've made canals and things, but I've never actually done a poured resin uh, pond for my, for my battle table. Um, and I've always fancied making one, but I just, I've never got round to it. So that's what I'm going to have a go at. So what I've done is I've uh, cut out some sign writers board. I think it's called PVC foam board. Um, but I got it as an off cut from a local sign writer. And um, I've cut myself a couple of pieces because I'm going to have two attempts at it. So I can try different techniques on, on each one. Um so the first thing that I need to do really is obviously I've I've cut this out, but I need to uh, you know chamfer the side and edges down, which I'm just going to do with a Stanley knife. Um, so I'll get that bit done first, and then I'll bring you back because then we need to be thinking about what I'm going to do to create the slightly raised area for the pond itself. Right, let me just get set up and I'll bring you back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chamfer the edge off with a knife. And you just slope it up so you've got a nice gentle slope onto the piece. see what I'm aiming for and that way when it lays flat if you have a look at this other one that I've done it's a nice smooth transition from the table you've got to do that all the way round to be honest I'm using an old blade here so I mean it could be a lot easier than this anyway I'll get this one finished and then I'll bring you back for the next stage all right so what I've done as I said, I've cut all this round and I've just smoothed it over with a bit of sandpaper around the edges. Uh, it didn't need a lot, just a bit. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be building up an edge of the actual pond. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this, really. I could use, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of filler or... I could just do it straight with the sculpt mould. But what I've decided to do is use a sheet of blue foam. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the shape of the pond. So here in these pictures you can see that I've cut out the basic shape. And now I'm using my hot wire cutter to actually chamfer the edges and finish the overall shape that I'm looking for. And once I've done that, I'm starting to smooth out all these rough cuts now. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at the end of the day, you don't want it showing through after you put the scatter down because it does spoil the effect. So it is worth just making it, you know, reasonably smooth so there's no obvious, you know, deep hollows or, or cuts in it. Right, so as you can see, I've... Uh... Finished carving and smoothing it out and I've stuck this piece on for the outline of my pond so you're going to come up onto it like that and then the pond will be here I'm in the middle of just putting in some island pieces on this one I'm just going to glue it down with some uh, basing glue um, the reason why I'm doing that on this one is because I ordered a, a little plastic bridge that I seen online um, the other day and I thought it might be good to have that going across the centre of this one. 
So, I mean, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to have a tree here. Maybe one on the other side, I don't know yet. Um, but I thought I'd have this one so you can actually cross it on a bit of a rickety old bridge. So, I'm going to glue these down. And then I'll, uh, I'll have to leave that to set now. But the other one, what I've done is I've glued that one on and I've glued a little island in the middle of it. Because this one, I'm going to have it as an obstacle so you can't get past it that way. Uh, again, I've created a couple of slightly wider areas here in case I want to put the trees on it. So... That's where I'm up to with this one. I've got to wait for the other one to dry. When that one's dry, I'm going to be doing the same as I'm going to do to this. Um, I, I, I know that resin doesn't react well with foam. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't react well with this stuff either. This uh, blue foam. So I thought I'm going to coat the sides of the actual pond with some of my own made sculpt mould you know the one that I made I made it from uh, mushed up toilet rolls and uh, plaster of Paris it was a fairly long process but I got two great big drums out of it so it's kept me going for ages so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix some of that up and I'm going to start putting it around this edge and I might even do a very thin layer of it on this plastic because I don't know how resin reacts with this either, to be fair. And I don't want to take no chances when I get to that stage. Right, so I've mixed some of me school mould type stuff up. Um, I've made it slightly softer than normal because I want to try and pour a layer on the base. So all I'm going to be doing is squeezing it up against this edge making it smoothed out as well at the top Is you gotta work fairly fast with this stuff, so but it's no good mixing up more than you need because it just goes hard and and then it, it doesn't apply well. Now, as well as doing that, I want to apply some of this to the actual base itself. And that's why I've made it more watery than normal, because I really want to squash this down. already starting to dry so you can see the way I'm going with this right I'll get on with the rest of this and I'll bring you back when I've done that bit right so as you can see I've uh, carried on and gone over onto the other one as well. And uh, I've tried to make it reasonably smooth on the bottom. 
Um, every now and again, you know, from my, this is mainly a problem with my homemade uh, sculpt mould. It has a few lumps in it. But uh, on the old, it's not too bad. Right, so now that this is uh, drying off, you can see how it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this over with some uh, just basic brown with some Mod Podge in it, just to seal it really. Uh, it won't be the final colour, but I just wanted something that's going to give this a bit of stability first. Like I say, I will be painting over this, but it needs something, you know, just, just to stop anything else um, unsettling the, uh, the filler that we've put in. So make sure as well that the resin can't react with any of this as well. And that's it. So I'll get that done to the other one. And then we'll let that dry and then we'll come back for the next stage. Right, I've brought you back because what I'm going to do now, I've actually sieved um, some garden soil. Fairly tight sieve on it and mixed it with some uh, beige grout, tile grout. And I'm going to use this to sprinkle on this layer of uh, brown and mod podge that I've put down on the surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the edges of where the actual pond will be and then over the base and down. And I'm going to start because I've, I've sieved it into two types. I've got sieved and then ultra sieved. And I've put that through like a like the toe of a stocking or something like that to get it really fine. But first of all, I'm going to put this slightly bigger stuff. Actually, it might be better to use a little spoon on this so that I can keep a bit of control over it. I'll cover the rest in the fine mix just to give it some texture but while it's drying we'll have a go at making some reeds. Right so I'm waiting for the bases to dry 
I'm going to go ahead and make a few reeds that I'll be able to put into the into the pond. So basically what I've done is I've bought a few of these children's brushes from the local pound shop and they're like hog hair brushes so they'll make great reeds and what I'm doing is I'm pulling them out a chunk at a time and uh, then I can stick some in some uh, using my glue gun I'll put a bit of that on this uh, grease proof paper and uh, I can stick them in and they'll dry quite quickly Just take a chunk out. Obviously, you've got to go fairly quick. And as you can see, that's stuck straight away. So I think that's going to be the way to go on these ones because I need them to. Uh, hold in place while I while I get them glued and then I can always trim them to size you know make it a bit shorter if I need to right so that's got quite a few of them done as I say I won't be using this many but it it was worthwhile just doing a few more you know while I was doing it I mean I will open and space some of these out a little bit as well you know some of the ones that are standing a bit tight but uh, they'll come in handy for the ponds. Right, I'll be back in a bit. You'll have to forgive me. I'll go ahead of myself there and carried on without you. Uh, basically, what I've done is I've put some of the uh, fast drying basing glue down across the model now that it's dry. And I'm sprinkling on some light green scatter right so now that I've got the light green down I'm going to put a scatter of some mid green and mix that in. I'm not going to put any more glue down. I'll glue it and seal it at the end. This is just to break this up. I'm not doing too much of it, just a light sprinkle here and there. Oh, I've got some earth scatter as well so I'm going to put a bit of that around this area in case I have a tree. And I'm also going to have a little bit suggesting a well-trodden path coming up here. Not too much, I still want the grass to show through. That'll be enough. I'm just going to use 
some PVA to put down some shrubs and things. Try some different corn foam. I'm going to give some really light green. Not very much though. A bit of dark green as well. It can be like the base of a bush. We'll add a few sprinkles over it. I'm going to put a few sprinkles of this uh, green clump that's fairly fine, but I'm going to rub it through this. This to suggest some bigger weeds here and there. going to put a little bit of this uh, light green from the beginning finally over it to try and bring some of it together a bit more as well I've got this fine turf burnt grass because that's going to help bring a lot together So I've mixed some ISO in my little sprayer and I'm just going to mist it over all what I've done. Good coat. Right, I'll bring you back when it's dry. Right, so now that these have all dried off, what I've done is I've just painted a bit of uh, perception of depth. So I've painted lighter browns and then slowly gone darker into the areas that I want to look the deepest. 
and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick in some of the reeds that I made um, but I'm going to use the super glue because apparently PVA reacts quite badly with the uh, water effects um, that I'm going to use. That's the first one in place. Can you see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few more in that area and build up a bit of a reed bed around the edge. I'm not going to do it everywhere, I just want a little section of it. What I will do though is use some of these smaller tufts. Um, to build up a little bit around this bank, just be, just behind it. little reed bank there I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few of the longer reeds into these big ones just individual bits give it a look that it's sprouting out from it Now at this stage you could add a few more uh, tufts and shrubs and then call it done. Um, but what I want to do is go on to show you some flocking and show you how that looks. Now obviously if you were going to go for the flocking you probably wouldn't put in as much effort with this ground base that I've done. Because you could have added the static grass straight from the soil colour. Right, so what I've done now is I've spread a bit of... PVA and I'm going to do a little bit of static grass on this now Pin in place. Turn on. tidy up the bit that I have done now before I do the rest right I'll bring you back in a minute right so as you can see I've applied static grass to both of them now I've gone for a slightly darker uh, autumn uh, static grass on this one and uh, more of a spring light one on this one um, I've added a few little details here and there since you last saw me I've put 
a little tree stump here, another one down this end, and a few more little shrubs and plants and a few tufts here and there as well. Just just to kind of, you know, give it a bit of variety really. And then on the other one, again, I've added some more tufts and some little shrubs. And I've also painted up a little bicycle. I don't know if you can see that there. I painted it up first and then I added rust to it because I wanted it to, you know, like someone's just left it and it slid into the pond and been there for years. I just thought it'd just, you know, give it a bit of a lived in feel. So now that I've done all of that, well, there is one other thing I was going to show you. I've got these online. You'll be able to see them very well, but I'll try and bring them up to the camera. I found somebody uh, selling some 3D printed swans. So I've painted them up ready to add to these as well. So everything now is done and ready for the water, which uh, I've got to admit I'm a bit nervous about because I've poured resin before, um, but I've not really invested a bit of time into something and been relying on the water turning out well so much. So... Um, I'm a bit nervous about this. Not only that, I'm using a product that I've had for about three years when I was first starting to get serious about doing hobbying and I bought some of this, you know. I mean, now I'd just buy, you know, resin. But at the time, I went for this realistic water by, is it Woodland Scenics? Now, I don't know whether this stuff keeps or not. But it's literally been in, in on my shelf for three years plus. Um, so I'm hoping that's not going to be a detriment to it. I'm going to treat it exactly like it's my ordinary uh, resin. I'm going to try not to cause too many bubbles in it. And apparently, um, this does specifically say that it doesn't like PVA. Well, to the best of my ability, I've kept PVA out of the pond areas. Um, I've sealed it so it can't get to the foam. Um, the other thing that it says is uh, that you can only pour this to an eighth of an inch thickness each time. So, it may be that I'll have to do more than one pour, but I think you've got to leave it a couple of days between each one. But uh, time will tell. The other thing, um, I've seen online people using uh, Woodland Scenic uh, inks to put in this. I haven't got any um, Woodland Scenics, but I have got some just acrylic ink. I'm hoping that won't be a problem, but you're going to find that out with me. Um, so, right, with no further ado, he says nervously, I'm going to pour a little bit of wool, pour a little bit of this out now into this container. Obviously, I'm going to have to do a guess to how much I use.
So I've pulled out that much. I don't know whether you can see that very clearly. And what I'm going to do, because obviously if I have got to do it in multiple pours, I'm going to want to be able to replicate the mix of ink to be exactly the same. So I'm going to put a little mark on my container. So I can see how much I poured for the next time. Alright, let's just put this lid on before I do something clumsy like knock it over. <laughs> Right, now what I'm going to do here, I think this has got oh, a typical sucker thing, eyedropper thing on the ink. So I'm going to try and measure it out. So one drop, two drops, three drops, four drops. So four drops initially. I'm not going to vigorously stir it because it tells you not to. Right. Now, I'm going to pour from the centre. let it find its own level a bit first right. just let that what I have done is uh, I've got a couple of cocktail sticks so I can help just take it around into these reeds. And then I can pop any in, any obvious bubbles that I see. Certainly finding it's level up here. There's a bubble. Yeah, I think my table has got a little bit of a slant in it, you know. I think that... Uh, I think that's a lot straighter. I'm going to put it on my main table to dry anyway, so... Right. Let me just take this one out of the way and I'll bring the other one in and we'll start pouring some resin into that one too. Right, I'm ready for the second pour. Obviously this one's a little bit bigger. It has got a very shallow pot on this side so I'm still going to have to be quite careful. First of all... I'll start by measuring the same amount. Bring you in a bit closer. Well, you'll be able to make the bubbles out, but there are some in it this time.
that's pretty clear. But uh, one trick I did know, I did see um, is using a little torch. To uh, just gently go over it to bring any bubbles to the surface and pop them. So I'm going to just try a bit of that. Yeah, that worked. Lovely. Yeah, great job. Try not to set fire to the scenery itself. That does a fantastic job. I don't know whether you could see them very well, but there were some really tiny little bubbles. And it's cleared them all. So far, so good. I suppose what I've got to look for now is, you know, how it's going to dry and what it's going to look like. And as I say, it might be... I could do another layer, but I, I don't take it any thicker at the moment until this has gone off. But yeah, so far it's looking pretty good. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll bring you back and show you how it turned out. Right, so good news, it's actually set. Um, it took a bit longer than normal, but I think that's the cold weather and things, so... Uh, but at least it, 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 it proves that it will take the ink. Um, so at least I know for future that I can use that. Um, I think what I'm going to do, though, um, because it said you can pour um, another amount in after the first is set... Now, I haven't got a lot of scope for going a lot higher anyway. Um, but I'd like to take it up a little bit more if I can. Particularly on this one. So, I've mixed up the same quantity. Probably won't use all of this. Um, but I've mixed it up to the same ratio, same number of inks as before. Uh, and I'm going to just take it steady because I don't want this to overflow into the grass I think that's as far as I dare take it at the moment on this one so I'm just going to pop the bubbles that I can see I'm just going to take this one over to the big table um, to make sure it's laying flat and check that its levels are okay. So I'll bring you back and then we'll look at the second one. Right, let's pour this second one now. bubbles there's still a few fine bubbles that I want to get rid of first It's 
such a good trick. I would definitely recommend this if you're doing it for the first time. It it makes such a difference. I mean, that was bursting bubbles. I couldn't see until I seen them bursting. So I'm entering the last phase really now with the pond. And one of the last things that I need to do is I need to think about attaching the swans. And then I'm going to be using some gloss Mod Podge to create some ripples on top of the pond. Um, first of all, I'm going to think about where I want my swans to be. And I'm just going to put a small drip of uh, super glue on, on the uh, swan to attach it because I can further attach it with the Mod Podge, so. Right, I think I'm going to keep the other two for the other pond. So the next stage is to use some of this to uh, some of the Mod Podge gloss to form the ripples. I'm going to tip a little bit into this container because I can throw it away afterwards. Enough. Just basically put in long. and uh, overlapping layers the same coming away from the middle bit I think I'll do Right, that's it. So basically what I've got to do now is got to allow this time to completely dry and uh, then we can bring it back and have a final look at it. Right, I'll bring you back soon. Right, they've completely dried now. You can just see slight faint marks where there's still some more of the uh, gloss Mod Podge to, you know, to lose its colouring but not very much. Um, seems to have gone really well. Um, I'm really pleased with it. It's the first time I've actually made ponds, so um, I'm going to call that done, really. The swans are in place. Um, obviously, I've got the places that are left out, particularly for the trees. Now, if you remember in a previous video, I made some wire trees and I left them uh, with the bottoms unfinished. Well, I've finished them now so that they can go on these and they just fit into that gap. Same with this one. And that's it. So that's them with trees. But 
as I said, you know, at the beginning when I set out, I've got plenty more bases left, so I could decide to have different trees, a winter tree, a dead tree, a rock, a park bench, whatever. Um, so that's the beauty of leaving it with it off because it'll pack away reasonably easily. And I can change it about by putting different things into the gaps. So, all right, well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, it's been a long one, I know. Thanks for sticking with it. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Um, or even subscribing. Um, and please feel free to comment. You know, if there's anything that you, you think I could have done better or, you know, improve on. Or even suggestions for things that I might want to look at. I, I'm always ready to read the comments. I love it, you know, when I get the feedback. And uh, I always reply to everyone who, who puts a message. So, you know, you're all welcome. Right, I'll just leave you with a few, few photographs. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.